Hey there, this is Matt. Once again, what about to another review as I look through a couple of found footage films I actually do enjoy in preparation of doing a fan commentary for the Blair Witch Project since we're coming across the 30th anniversary. And this is a film I reviewed quite a few years ago. Watch it again, I still rather enjoy it. I thought this was a welcome surprise and an underrated gem. And as, as above, so below. This is a found footage film I think done right and done well. It's pretty much adventure horror done in a found footage level. It's sort of if Laura Croft was in a found footage horror film. I like the melding of those two realms. Made it a little bit more different, a little bit more unique in the genre. It didn't have the same typical ending. I thought the ending was rather satisfying. I like when movies do the thing where they play off people's fears, a la Event Horizon, where their fears is used against them, or their personal demons, or their past is used against them. I also think the location was a perfect location. It's the catacombs under Paris, which are a real set of catacombs where people, cemeteries, all that stuff were going to the ground and things happen. So you have this maze of bones all across under <laughs> these catacombs of Paris. Yeah, it's a great location for a horror film. I thought they used that very, very effectively. A lead character, which does seem a little bit pushy, this lady, but I kind of got where she... I, I could deal with her because of... There's you know, a character who dealt with her father, who had recently committed suicide and wanted to finish off his duties, his passion, his passion between her passion... So she was very driven type of character. Does she remind me a little bit of a Laura Croft type of character? Maybe like the guns blazing type, but the wanting to uncover the truth, antiquities, and pretty much she gets with this cameraman, this guy here. As well as this other guy who I liked. I forget the actor's name. We'll look it up. Who they used to be a thing together. And then he died in the prison. Ultimately because of her. And so he of course has some hard feelings about that. Which I don't blame the guy. But I like that the guy. The first time we see him. He does this weird thing where he goes around fixing. He goes around fixing broken bells, like churches across the countryside, and he fixes bells. I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to give to the character. That this is, I mean, it doesn't really do anything with the rest of the film. It's not like he has to go fix this and that later on in the film. But it was a nice little moment for the character. Oh, yeah, that's a bit different. But the three of them get some local people to help them journey down to the catacombs of Paris. Because ultimately what they're looking for is character Scarlet, is the name of the character. Her and her ex-boyfriend George, get the actress name, Perdita Weeds played Scarlet and Ben... Feldman played George. I thought they did a good job. I thought everyone did a good job, honestly. I don't think anyone did a, a bad job. And what they're looking for is the Philosopher's Stone. That deals with alchemy and turning lead into gold and mystical arts. Also, it might be a tomb filled with treasure as well, but they're mainly looking for the Philosopher's Stone. Of course, the people who are with them, they're looking for, oh, hey, there could be a treasure here. <coughs> but like I said, it's, it was a bit interesting that you brought this adventure 
Indiana Jones type of element into a found footage horror film. And that made it a bit more unique to me, a bit more interesting to me. Because even before the horror starts playing, I, I like films I love the Indiana Jones movies, the first Laura Croft Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie. I like the National Treasure films. I like looking for clues and X to Y to Z and I don't know shit about history. I don't know shit about archaeology. But when I watch it in movies, it fascinates me. Maybe it's the epitome of searching these places and finding clues and possible treasures and again I find that I find that pretty cool. I find that pretty neat. I find that... I don't know how to describe it. It's... It's like something I would have wanted to do, but not want to put the the hard work into it. But the adventure aspect seems a lot, a lot of fun. I thought this guy looked familiar. The guy who played... This guy here, who I like, who's the ex-boyfriend of her, he was actually in the Friday the 13th reboot. He was one of the kids that got killed early in the film. <clears throat> okay, I thought he looked familiar. Yeah, he's one of the people killed at the beginning of the film. I think he was one of the two having sex in the tent. And... Oh, I didn't even recognize that. Apparently he was also in this movie as a character Travis, which I... Uh, must not have been one of the main characters. I completely did not remember him. Huh. Okay, then. Interesting. Oh, okay. He was there for like five minutes in the film. Okay. He played the like a new boyfriend of our lead character's love interest. Yeah, he he was only in this film for like five minutes. Okay. Sorry, didn't match the film. But yeah, I enjoyed their journey. I enjoyed the location they used. I enjoyed the, yeah, it might not be realistic, but I don't know shit about how things work in archaeology and the history of the rose tea and historians and I don't know anything about that so it may be all bullshit but how they tell it I buy into it and just enjoy the ride and I like the journey that they go into and the, the crazy things that happen while in these catacombs. Like this poor guy having to squeeze through this very narrow gap that's just all covered in bones as a part he gets stuck. And of course he's freaking out like anyone would, be in the dark, with bones all behind you and noises, not knowing what the other noises are behind him, trying to get pulled out. how they go from point A to point B and it seems like they're right back in the same spot. It's like how the hell did we go through a circle when we went through and when we went through somehow we're in the same spot. What's going on here? So mind tricks are being played on them. Uh, they do find a tomb of treasure. They do find the Philosopher's Stone which is able to heal this one person's wounds but then other crazy shit happens. And at one point they get to a room that is a reflection of the room they left behind where everything's reversed. People start getting killed in nasty ways. One person trying to climb down. The rope gets cut and falls away down to the death. Another person, uh, earlier in the film we saw he had a burn mark but no questions were asked. Later they see like a parked car on fire. And the guy's like, it wasn't my fault. They're using their inner fears against them. And he's pulled in and sucked in and overcome by their fear or their demon, personal inner demon or their guilt, wherever else they want to put it. Or this guy here, his personal backstory is his brother drowned when they were kids. 
there's a point they're crawling, they see a puddle in the water, and he sees his brother, and you see like, oh, and he's screaming for him, and he's like, hey, he's not there. That sort of playing around in mind games, a lot of Venture Horizon, I do like, I do enjoy. I don't know why, I guess because with each person, it could be a different kind of personal demon, so you're more free to explore other avenues of horror or other avenues of getting to know a bit of, about the characters because you know a bit more about their pain or their past in a physical and possibly horrific manner. These are in the point where these figures, these dark figures and shrouds are coming up. And I find this fun. I think the movie meant it to be this way where she's running our lead and like fucking body checks one of them. Like, fuck you. She doesn't say that, but it's like body checks a couple of them, which was entertaining. I don't know, just the way it played out and. The, the true nature of the Philosopher's Stone with the, the, the mirror. If you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, oh, okay, I do where this movie's going with. And I kind of enjoy the journey that it's taken me on. I appreciate that. And, you know, before that, it was it was a build-up. I thought it was a build-up that worked well. And then it wasn't too long. It wasn't too... I didn't think it was boring at all. I thought that the pacing worked fine. The little creepy stuff at the beginning, like they find a piano, and it, oh, it looks like a piano I had when I was a kid, and the same missing note that was among them when they were a kid. It's the same note that's fucked up today. <laughs> Again, I didn't find any acting bad or poor. It had quite a few nice horrific moments. Granted, I wasn't creeped out scared, but I enjoyed them watching them. I, when she's trying to get back to this location and she gets pulled into this body of bloody water. And then her, at least her backstory of coming to terms with the suicide of her father and relieving of her guilt and not pick up the phone that night before he, before he passed away. I do think there's a decent amount of stuff going on with this film and I think... I don't think it's as bad as the critics make it out to be. I know the guys on the Cinema Snob, the two went to see it, they totally trashed it. I disagree. I think it's a lot better than some of the films they liked, to be blunt and honest. And the directors... A bit surprised because they did the Poughkeepsie tapes, which I never gave a fuck about to see, Quarantine, which I did not like, and Devil, which I did not like. But that is, they did No Escape, the film with, not the one with Ray Liotta, this is a one with Owen Wilson, Pierce Brosnan, which I haven't seen, maybe one day. But I did not like Quarantine, I did not like Devil, so I sounded like, they did this movie? I thought this was a much better film than those. Much better. Uh, John Eric Dottle. I don't know why I said them, for some reason I thought it was uh, two people, but John Eric Dottle... John Eric Doddle, or Dodo, was the director, and he co-wrote it with his brother, Drew. But yeah, the whole Philosopher's Stone, the, the stuff they were talking about, that was an interesting backstory. The Catacombs of Paris was, was a creepy, cool, claustrophobic location. I thought the movie went at a good pace. I didn't find it boring at all. Enough physical things happen, so it's not one of those nothing happens, then you hear some wind. Some people get mad at that. If it's done well, I'm fine, like the Blair Witch Project, but some people get mad. If you want stuff to actually happen, it does happen in this movie. The ending is satisfying. I love the idea of playing off the title of is How They Escape. As above, so below. So then you gotta go down in order to get up. I like the visual way the ending was done where they have to go down and come out of this manhole 
I'm like, okay, that's nice visual, visually interesting sequence, in my opinion. But yeah, I definitely disagree with all the, the critics. It's definitely better than shit like... What was the Final Fantasy film about the school? There was a Final Fantasy film that took place in a school. My friend Michael Teen saw it. The Gallows? No, I mean, if you're not a fan of Final footage, I don't know if this would change people's minds, but I do think... This is one of the best ones. I really do. I think this is one of the underrated gems in that genre. Because the idea it was going with. Nothing new or outstanding or breathtaking or... I've never seen this before. I just... Entertaining. That's really what it was. It was entertaining and it was a pretty decent pace. and I like the premise. I like the location. And for the most part, I liked the cast. I thought the cast did fine. The ending wasn't a typical downbeat, everyone dies ending. Try to do stuff a little bit different. So a lot of stuff I appreciate about this movie. I even like the, the cover. I think it's a pretty cool, simple but cool cover. I like the red. The only way out is down. That's the truth, technically. By the end of the film, that is the truth. <laughs> As above, so below... Quite enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. We watch it today. So thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.